Welcome back, Mento families. I'm Mr. Thorpe. This is Mr. Aldous. We are here today to introduce a new maths game to you that you can play at home. A nice simple one that can be targeted. This one's probably targeted at probably grade one to about grade three, but you can adapt it for prep and you can adapt it to make it a higher game. Um, and I'll show you that a bit later. What this is, is, is a game that teaches place value. So the learning purpose of this is place value, understanding uh, numbers and their place value, and also understanding greater than and less than concepts. What you'll need for this is a 10-sided dice uh, and a game board. You can download these game boards attached to the newsletter. Uh, if not, it's just a simple three columns for hundreds, tens, and ones. So I've got my three dice here, and the aim of this game is to have the larger number than your opponent, okay? So I'm gonna roll my three dice here, then I've got an eight, a one, and a two. So my number here, and it's all about the language that your child is saying to you as well. So I'm gonna to say to Mr. Aldous here that I have 821. So I'm gonna write that down, 821. It doesn't matter where you write it, I've just written it at the top. You'll see the strategy come in as we progress through the game. Well, well thank you, Mr. Thorpe. So I'll have my turn. So I roll a six, a one, and a zero, so I can make 610. Now I can put my 610 anywhere on my game board, but I've got to be careful because I want to put my number in the position where I think I can beat Mr. Thorpe. So if I put it at the top, I'm probably not going to beat him because my number is smaller than him. So I might start and I've always just put my number in the middle of my board. Beautiful. So I roll again. My number here, that is I've rolled 850. So I can be strategic now and see that Mr. Aldous has put it in the fourth column, so I'm going to put mine in the fourth column, knowing that I'm going to beat him with that one, so I'm going to go 850. Beautiful. And now it's back to my turn, and I have rolled, I can make 930, so I know that Mr. Thorpe, the first number that he has is 821, and I know that 930, which is the biggest number I can make, is greater than his one. So I'm going to add 930. So I've now rolled seven, a six, and a one. So I'm going to write down my number of 761, Mr. Aldous. Very well, thank you. So I rolled a six, a three, and a two. So I can make 632. At the moment, that's not greater than any of Mr. Thorpe. So I'm going to add it in a blank row. Seven, four, and a two. 742. So I can be strategic with it again and see where Mr. Aldous has placed his 632. I'm going to write my 742 in the same column. So for me now, I've rolled a 6, a 7, and a 5. Once again, haven't been successful in rolling a very high number, so I'm going to have to find a blank spot. Hopefully, it will allow me to eventually get a point there. So again, I don't want to concede a point here yet, so I'm just going to put down here 543 is the largest number that I can make. Yeah, good roll. That is a good roll. 9, 8 and 0, I can make a 980. Now if I check Mr Thorpe's game board, maybe there's somewhere there where I can beat him. I know in, his, in the third row he has got 543. My 980 is greater than his number. Eight, five, and one, so I'm going to have 851. Mr. Aldous, the second row was 675. I'm going to put it there, 851. Beautiful. So I've rolled a six, a seven, and a zero. Let's have a look, I've still got a few blank spaces left. I'm going to have to use up one of my blank spaces to roll, hopefully. Eight eight zero. So we're getting down to the end of the game here. Eight hundred and eighty. My numbers, Mr. Mm -hmm. So I've got not rolling some big ones, but this one might help me. Eight hundred and forty-one is the biggest number I can make. And as Mr. Thorpe, the last number is seven hundred and sixty-one. My eight hundred and forty-one is greater than his, so I will hopefully run from there. 
five, a six, and a three, so mine is going to be 653. And my game board is four. Yeah. Of course, I'm on to my last roll. Bring up our last row, and I roll a five, a three, and a four. So I can, of course, make 543 to top as well, plus blank right now. So now that our game boards are full, we need to compare who has the greater number. If your number is larger, you give yourself a tick. Person with the most ticks at the end is our winner. So let's have a look, Mr. Thomas. My first one is 821. What's yours? I have 930. So whose is larger? That's mine. So I'm yep. going to give myself a tick for that one. That's a point to me. Yep. Uh, my next number is uh, 765. And mine is 851. So mine is the larger. So give myself a tick. Mm -hmm. Next one going down, I have 980, Mr. Thorpe. Mine's a lot smaller than that, Mr. Aldous. It's 543, so you win that one. Oh, that's great. Next up is 610 for me. And I have 850. Definitely Mr. Thorpe's point there. 760. And I have 880. Next up, 543. And I have 653. Another point for Mr. Thorpe. 632. 742. And the last one, 841. And mine is 761. So I'll count up my ticks. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. To Mr. Aldous is two, uh, three. I have three. So you, as you can see there, us going through that game, it's very important to get your children to articulate the, the words of the numbers they are saying. So they're getting used to saying numbers in the hundreds. As of course you could probably see, this game can be easily adapted to higher years for three, four. You start bringing in your thousands, five, six, you can bring in your tens, thousands, or hundreds of thousands to make this game uh, age appropriate and level appropriate. So, hope you've enjoyed our game. Hope you've got another one in your repertoire and arsenal now. You can play at home with your children. We'll look forward to seeing you on our next video. Thank you.